Hi, I'm Joyce Randolph, Trixie Norton of the Honeymooners. Now don't go away, because coming right up will be Profiles. Welcome to Profiles, I'm Tiffany Walker. This week's guest is Joyce Randolph, forever remembered for her role as Trixie Norton in what is now considered to be one of the greatest television shows of all time, The Honeymooners. Originally produced in the mid-50s, today The Honeymooners is still seen all around the world in syndication. After a short break, we'll join our host Mickey Burns as he welcomes legendary actress Joyce Randolph to Profiles. Welcome back to Profiles. Joyce Randolph is the only remaining survivor of the famous Honeymooners Quartet that included Art Carney, Audrey Meadows, and of course, Jackie Gleason. During the 1955-56 TV season, 39 classic episodes of the Honeymooners were made. Amazingly, the show came to a halt after just one season. So let's join our host, Mickey Burns, on location at Ashford and Simpson Sugar Bar in the heart of New York City as he welcomes actress Joyce Randolph to Profiles. Joyce Randolph. How nice to see you, Mickey. Wonderful to see you. You look great. Thank you. Of course, for our viewers, forever remembered uh, for your role as Trixie Norton. That's right. On what is now considered to be one of the greatest television shows ever to go on the air, The Honeymooners. That's what they say. It's crazy, but... <laughs> the highlight of your life. Yes, of course. Uh, today, The Honeymooners is still seen around the world. In syndication, do you, do you watch it occasionally? Do you get sure, a chance to see once it once in a while? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. what do you think when you when you see the uh, the shows? Oh, it's hard to say. Wow, I can hardly remember doing that. It's you know <laughs> 50 years ago, and and but it's fun to see it. Uh, are you ever surprised at the popularity and the longevity of that show? Well, I'm getting used to that surprise, but, <laughs> but yes, uh, surely. We, we never expected anything like this to happen. We, we did them once, and, and they were gone, we thought. Period. There was no tape. There was no uh, re-showing of anything, you know. What do you, what do you think it was about that show? Because so many hundreds, hundreds of shows have come and gone, and you really don't see them anymore. What was it about the Honeymooners that enabled it uh, to stand the test of time? Well, Jackie was every man, and people could identify with Jackie. So many people said, oh, my dad was exactly like Jackie. And so there was this identification. And uh, Jackie and Art were magic together. The chemistry was oh, perfect with right Jackie on. And, and Art. Mm -hmm. Now, you were born in Detroit, yes. Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you get your start in show business? Well, I, you know, studied theater there as, yeah, like, <laughs> as, as much as you could in, in Detroit. Detroit in those days. Yeah. And then I became um, the youngest member of the Wayne University Civic Theater. And I was doing some plays there. And um, I guess that uh, Paul Lilly, head of the Catholic Theater of Detroit, saw me. So when a touring company of Stage Door came to Detroit, and mm -hmm. they called the Catholic Theater to get some young girls to play all those, there's so many roles in Stage Door, uh -huh, uh -huh. he called me and introduced himself and said, I've seen your work. Would you go in with my girls to audition for Stage Door? I did that, got one of the little parts, and mm -hmm. um, we had a pretty good run in Detroit. Glenda Farrell was the star. Mm -hmm. She's a wonderful actress. She wasn't exactly right for, for that <laughs> lead, but she did a good job. And the, the producers, uh, McCoy and Leventhal, decided to go to Chicago. So, if union rules, we were not union in Detroit. We were just getting, you know, $25 getting a week. Getting work. And it was work, yeah. yes. But if you travel from one city to another with a show, you have to belong to Actors' Equity, our union. So there, there, I mean, that was the best $100 I ever spent at 18 to, to have that equity card. That was, that was your ticket. And we toured to Chicago, you know, on the train in those days. And um, we lasted two weeks in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> the critics were a little tougher there. Now, you came to New York shortly after that. Well, we went back to Detroit, and one of the girls and I uh, told our parents we were going to, D to New York. And the we just went on the overnight train. And became successful rather quickly. 
Well, uh, got yeah. work. Got yeah, work. Oh, yes, again. I got work. Sure. Uh, three weeks later, ran into Mr. McCoy on 45th Street and he said, "Hey, kid, you want to go back to Detroit?" And I said, "What do you mean?" You know? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "I'm sending a touring company of ABs Irish Rose, and mm -hmm. you can be the understudy, and you have to be assistant stage manager. And in each city, we'll hire four girls for the wedding party. You're uh -huh, the matron of uh -huh. honor. You teach those girls what to do. I mean, all this work for you know <laughs> the, the minimum, which was terrible in those days." But it was fun. It was great. I spent a year doing that. We had long runs. And then you also started on Broadway. Uh, not that show. Uh, then there was the show after that. Uh, again, it was McCoy and Leventhal. And um, they, they called me to join a Goose for the Gander, starring Gloria Swanson and right. Conrad Nagel, prior to its Broadway debut. And uh, I joined the show. They had let some girl go. And, and I was the, the understate and the maid. I played the maid. And Miss Swanson didn't think I looked like a maid, so she said, make her look plain. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and um, we opened on Broadway, mm -hmm. and I have never heard such an ovation in my life as when Gloria Swanson walked out. I mean, oh, she had to break star. the fourth wall and just bow and bow. It was, it was unbelievable. And that was it. You also uh, were increasingly active in early TV. Yes, uh, it kind of was starting then, and I rem remember being sent to um, the General Electric Studios in Schenectady right, right. to do a show, and oh, I don't know, you had to wear purple lipstick and, oh. and uh, blue, well, I mean, you couldn't wear white or black, of course, mm -hmm. which you still can't, but um, crazy makeups, and, and yes, that was, um, I did experimental television uh, way back right then. Right at the beginning. Yeah, right at the beginning. Did you think it would catch on? Oh yeah, we were all very excited about it. You this, knew, you knew yes, we somehow what the potential knew that was. This was fun, this was great, yeah. Mm -hmm. And early on you worked with uh, many superstars of the day, such as Eddie Cantor, mm -hmm. Dean well, Martin. Well, I, I went to, New to Hollywood for a year. And right. did a bunch of plays. No, I didn't get any movies, but I did five plays, plays and didn't like it out there. Came back to New York and then really got going with uh, the, the men you mentioned Eddie mm -hmm. Cantor, Martin and Lewis, um, Danny, Thomas, Danny when, Thomas. He was a dear, a a dear man. Uh, when I was a little girl in Detroit, I would hear him on WJBK radio. So I told him these things and he was so thrilled. He was just a darling man. And I worked with him several times. This was Colgate Comedy Hour. Today you're the remaining survivor of the Honeymoon Quartet. Yes. Unfortunately, Unfortunately. we missed them all. Yes. Uh, oh, Jackie yes. Gleason oh, passed yes. 1987, Audrey Meadows 1996, and recently Art Carney in 2003. Yeah. I know you were close yeah. with all of them and we miss them very much. Was Audrey's 96? I thought 97 because it's when my husband yeah, 96, died. 96, 97. In, in 97, I think. I know you miss her very much. Yes. Uh, in those days, uh, you know, late in her career, she was coming back to New York. She lived, uh, she had a magnificent mansion in Beverly Hills because mm -hmm. she was Mrs. Bob Six, who owned Continental Airlines. Right, right. <laughs> and, but she had, when she became a widow, she came back here a little more often and uh, she, my husband, and I would go to dinner. and. Um, Sure. Once in a while, she'd pick up the tab. <laughs> uh, yeah, she could afford it. Yeah. Uh, how did you win the role of Trixie Norton? <laughs> uh, Jackie was at uh, Channel 5, we called Dumont in those days, mm -hmm, not Fox mm -hmm. 5, Dumont. And he had the Cavalcade of Stars starring Jackie right. Gleason, the late Joe Cates, mm -hmm. you know, the father of Phoebe Cates, mm -hmm. uh, wonderful guy. Um, he called and asked me to do a, a live, it was everything was live, a live Clorettes commercial <laughs> on one of their shows, and, and uh, I did that. And he called again, we're going to repeat the Clorettes commercial on our mm -hmm. other show. Mm -hmm. I did that. Yeah. Uh, then he, a few weeks later, he called and um, uh, said, Jackie has written a serious sketch with the writers. Would you come in and audition and try to look older? You, you can't mm -hmm. be young yeah. in this because Jackie coming back to a tank town talks to the woman he should have married. Okay. And he's a vaudevillian. Mm -hmm. And so I, they hired me. And... Um, we rehearsed very little, as is Mr. Gleason's right. habit. Right, and we'll talk about very that. Very little, yes. Yeah. Even then, very little. <laughs> but the skit went over. I mean, we did very well, but the audience was amazed. You know, why are they doing this serious little thing on a mm -hmm. comedy mm -hmm. show? But Jackie must have liked it, because a few weeks later, Joe Cates is on the phone again. Yeah. And he asked, if, did I see a, a new thing they had been doing called The Honeymooners? And I said, no, my roommate and I, Diana Herbert, we don't even mm -hmm. have a TV set. Right, you know? right. He said, well, there's this bus driver, and uh, Pert Kelton is his wife, and we have our car, you know, as a sewer worker. And Jackie said to me, get me that serious actress to yeah. be the sewer worker's wife. Yeah. He didn't even remember my name. But I guess he felt that I could do it. And, and that was the story. So you, f you fell in like that, which isn't a good way without an agent. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> yeah, good point. Yes. You learned. But, but it was so <laughs> wonderful to be part of it.